Damn, son, where'd you find this?
bars on the window pane. Shrill sound that drives me insane. They're breaking, the feeling begins. Oh, oh now KEXP. You're listening to live music by Sweeping Exits here on the show. You just heard I Only Dream in Black and White and Teachers from the new album Glitter and Blood, which is your debut album. Yes, the debut full length out tomorrow. Yeah, and so I was pretty excited to find out that this was your debut album and that I wasn't sleeping on Sweeping Exits. Because <laughs> uh, I really like the Projectionist EP, uh, Projectionist EP, and I just, I, there was just this, well, when I found out about Sleeping Exits, I just, I was reading a, a, an article in the Portland Mercury, and there was like three artists, and I was like, okay, I'm going to check out these three, and then I listened to the music, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is a whole other world <laughs> that I am so excited to play on air and, and dive into, and then, yeah, so finding out that the EP was just the beginning was just great for me. <laughs> oh, that's so wonderful yeah. to hear, yeah. And, it, and listening to the EP... It, and listening to the full length, because you gave me a secret listen mm. of the full length, which is why you're here, because mm. it's amazing and really <laughs> fun. But I thought about, when I was listening to it, I was like, do they work together somehow? Or is, is it like a oh, piece yeah. to a bigger story? Because the way that it's, I don't know, the way that it's laid out, and when you're listening to it, it's like, okay, it's, this is a chapter, and this, this is another chapter. But... And I do want you to answer this question. I guess mm-hmm. I have a lot to say. Sure, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but reading about glitter and blood and the concept behind the person Desmond, I think is his yeah, name. Yeah, Desmond. And yeah. he is going through a lot and he realizes his powers mm. in it. And I don't know, I just I wanted you to elaborate on both EPs and, and... Yeah, so yeah, Glitter and Blood, the first LP is actually, um, it's the first in a set of four. It's a story arc of four albums. And so uh, The Projectionist is a prequel and it's set in the 1950s and it's about um, a vampire girl who works in a movie theater and devours misogynist men. Um, as and, well as she should. Yeah, she should. <laughs> and it also introduces a character from Glitter and Blood named Calliope, who um, is a child and, and is taken in by the projectionist. Um, and then Glitter and Blood is set in the 70s, and it's about um, a kid, Desmond, who's growing up with human parents. And uh, he's the grandchild of a vampire named the Great Duke, who was a band leader in the 40s, who was like this big pop star and uh, would... Uh, take all the humans into his, his mansion and, and devour them. It was sort of a mixture of Duke Ellington and Vlad the Impaler. And, um, and then Desmond, but Desmond uh, is sort of raised in like a human environment with human family, but he's got all this vampire blood. And Lady Death, who's the queen of the vampires, um, comes and rescues him from his boring human life and raises him in the palace of, of the vampires and then sends him out in the world as an adult to be a rock star to help lure humans into the palace for the feeding rituals. And then, I won't give away the ending, but Desmond does eventually become the queen and ascend to a genderless state. And then the four albums are a continuation of that. It basically goes Glitter and Blood in the 70s. The next album is set in the early 80s. It's in a dystopian city after, vamp- after Desmond leaves. The third album zooms to the year 3000 in the future, and the humans have taken back over, and it's about a transgender alien who comes down to give humans the perfect pop music. 
And then album four is going to be a purely symphonic piece uh, that's just going to be classical instruments. And that tells the story of Lady Death. So it actually zooms back to the 1700s and leads up to the point where Lady Death meets Desmond. So it's all a big circle. So that's pretty amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and that you have all of that down. Yeah. <laughs> are, are, is the albums written yet? Um, I have some songs for album two and three, but mm -hmm. it's a process because each album has a totally different sound. They're like set in specific areas with specific um, sounds. And so before each album, I have to kind of, it's almost like starting a new band. I have to retrain myself how to make a new style of music. And so I'm currently training myself how to do the sound for album two and album three separately because yeah. um, they have pretty different sounds. So nothing concrete, but the, the story arcs are there and I do like vignette writing and draw the characters, do character profiles. So I've s done some of that. But um, as far as actual songs, there's only like one song off album two done. So I read that when you're making an album or when you made this album yeah. that the lyrics came first and then the music. Well, no, actually, the, the, I think what I was saying in that piece was um, uh, the songs that I would write uh, dictated the plot developments. Mm -hmm. So initially the album was just about a kid who becomes a rock star and then it like became about vampires just because I kind of wrote this song that turned into being about vampires. Yeah. So it was really interesting because I didn't have the arc set out initially and then I'd write a song and I remember calling my brother and be like, I guess it's about vampires now. And he was like, really? Mm -hmm. And like everything that would happen, it was just kind of, it evolved very organically, which felt, felt nice. It wasn't like contrived. You yeah. Know? There were only a couple songs where I was like, okay, I need this plot point. So I've got to write a song to that. Uh, Otherwise, it like the plot came from the song. Yeah. So um, another thing is, is like, are, are you classically trained? Um, no, no, I just um, when I was like eighteen, um, I you know I didn't go to college or anything, and so and I didn't have a lot of friends, <laughs> and I worked in a preschool, and I would just come home from preschool and uh, come home from preschool, <laughs> uh, and uh, and I would just read on the internet all the time. I was really fascinated. The first thing I was obsessed with was fo song form and structure, and then I got into chord harmony, and then um, a lot of different things. So I kind of trained myself, and now actually what I do for money is I, I teach music cool. mostly to people like me who have played in punk bands but want to know more about theory mm -hmm. so I kind of and then the composition and the arrangements it's helped a lot by the program MuseScore that I use which is this free program that allows me to uh, arrange sheet music even though I can't I can't actually sight read but I can use the program mm -hmm. so yeah when I started um, going to college for radio school I didn't have any friends yeah <laughs> and I used to go into the library and like I was listening to Moby at, at one point, <laughs> and then I decided to start reading Slayer lyrics. Nice. And I read a lot. <laughs> and I was like, you know, this is my only friend. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so some more things about this album is, I don't know, I, I was just, I was thinking about like, all of the inspirations that you guys have, mm -hmm. ev that everyone has, and, and especially you. Um, and so there's like Roy Orbison, there's Rocky Horror Picture Show, yeah. there's horror films, there's vampires. Mm. Can you talk about how all of that affects and influences the music and the shows that you guys put on and everything? Yeah, I think that the core, the thing that connects all of the different influences, basically just anything that allows me to kind of escape into like a fantasy world, escape from reality. I think the the seed of of this whole phase of, of my music and everything was actually a terrible office job I had and I just like really wanted to escape. So anything like horror films or Bowie was a huge part of it. Um, just these things that allow me to feel like magic is real and that I can run away into something else. Um, and I think it manifests in all these different ways. I mean, I think that you know, a, a big factor for me is Italian horror, like Dario Argento, Mario Bava. And um, that actually manifests a lot in the sound, too. I take a lot of influence from how the soundtracks, particularly the earlier Italian horror stuff, it's kind of this weird hybrid of um, classical and sort of like jazz, like a dark big band jazz kind of feel. And so that influenced my composition a lot. And then uh, the aesthetics obviously are informed a lot by horror films. The photography we work with is named Danny Ransom, and she, me, and her are both like our favorite movie is Suspiria. And so all the photo shoots, it's like you know colored lights, and we're thinking about how can we you know kind of pay tribute to to that. And so yeah, it all kind of coalesces. But the core that holds it all together is just I want to create 
a world for people so that they can escape from the banality of human existence, you know? And yeah. So, yeah. So, honestly, I mean, even, like, things like Harry Potter, you know, mm-hmm. like, I just thought about anything like that. Or for me, it's but for, for me, it's not so much for other people like Star Wars or Star Trek, you know? It's like, it allows them to come home from their job and feel like, oh, magic is real. I don't have to spend my whole existence in this, you know, kind of two-dimensional world, yeah. you know? I also read... Um, just a, a cool part about you talking about how vampires relate to queer and femme empowerment. And I yeah. wanted you to talk about that. Totally. So, I mean, I think that on the whole, I mean, just queer and horror go so well together because traditional horror, you know, I think before it became less about just slasher films, you know, traditional horror was all about, I think, you know, society's fear of the other. There would be some other that's intruding and the society would band together to like destroy the monster or the vampire or whatever it was, you know. It was these stories that, you know, people have always told, you know, the people in their clan or whatever uh, to make them, you know, feel like they can have power to, you know, if they get attacked by a bear or something, you know, I think that's kind of the origins of it in in sort of my approximation. But for queer people, it's like we are the other, you know, we're this other that's crammed into the corners of society and we're everywhere, but we're not safe anywhere really. And so for me, I just invert that traditional horror dynamic and it's about rescuing the other from, you know, kind of a boring, judgmental, um, you know, toxic society. So it's like, uh, the monster represents us and we're using the power that we have to overcome uh, society. Yeah, I love it. It's beautiful. Yeah. We should hear some more music yeah. from you all. Sweeping yeah. Exits here on Audio Oasis on KEXP. Oh, 
they call my name I'm hungry, hungry, lost It's been said that I'm deranged But I am the queen now Everything has changed Things are going to change I'm always listening If you should take my name in vain I'm hungry, hungry, lost I'll not hesitate to be If you can learn to obey Well then come along with me Sweet Delilah Ask to be queen, you see. Now call out to Lady Death. Said, well, why would you leave this to me or need you? The people, they need a leader. In the dark of the night, well, I couldn't be strong for you. And lead us to fight, Lady Death. Why would you leave us? Why'd you have to go, Lady Death? Why would you leave us? Why'd you have to go? You know we need to lay it down Why would you go? We need you like the blood in our teeth In our bones and our very souls I know that there are those among us Who will try to deceive me Those villains that we found out Who will drink their blood in celebration there's only one thing, as I can quest with a measurable power. There's only one thing now that's left for you to do. Oh! And that is. Well, just listen to me. Because I am the queen now, and I too have begun to change. As she fills me up, you can see her beauty in my frame. I'm taking a form, neither man nor woman Some do more My power grows exponentially Can you see it? Can you feel it? Well, I am the queen I am the queen Ooh, I am the queen I may never be like her, the benevolent ruler, not quite. What she would want is for us to rise and live in an endless night. The humans have been foolish, they have sealed their own fate. It's time now for us to rise and live. We can take their place. 90.3 KEXP. You're listening to Audio Oasis Live Music by... Sweeping exits, you heard I am the queen and charming. Once you realize you are dead, I, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I can't even read because I'm just like, play some more. I just want you guys to play some more. It's like so much fun. It's like way more fun than I dreamed about. Oh. And like listening to the album is so fun, but mm. this is way more fun. I, yeah, yeah, I feel that way too. I mean, I, part of why I was so unbelievably happy to come up here is because I thought, you know, we'd have the opportunity to hear the strings in the full yeah. band. I mean, normally we do shows with the band and then we do shows with the quartet that are more like kind of acoustic, you know. Um, but hearing it all together, it just feels so warm. I mean, there's so many it's queers beautiful. in this room. <laughs> it's wonderful. Everything about this entire thing is wonderful. Yeah. And I, I actually, um, you know, we're friends on Facebook and oh. <laughs> I, you like put up a Facebook live. And so I kind of saw a little bit of what this was going to be like, because you were performing with the quartet, I yeah. think with, with you all. And yeah. I was like, okay, that's when I started to become inspired. And I was like, I've got to figure out how I can get this on here and oh, wow. it's so wonderful that you drove up here all of you from Portland yeah. <laughs> to do this for two hours 
Not yeah, that. it was. It's our pleasure. You know, it's so wonderful, and we're so glad to be on here. And I was really happy that you know it was your show too. I watched some sessions with you, and I just felt like you were someone I you know that I thought we would gel really well for the we're interview friends. and everything. Yeah, we're friends. You're a, <laughs> you're a Cancer, right? I am a Cancer. See, yeah, you're, I'm a Virgo. So a Virgo oh. and Cancer is like you know it's good. Water yeah, and Earth. You know, there's a lot good. of water and Earth in this band. So. Yeah, that's, yeah. It's so great. I was. I'm so happy, and I just can't thank you enough. I mean, it's been such an amazing experience, you know, and. Uh, yeah, so thank you. Yeah, well, I can't thank you enough for putting out this awesome music <laughs> oh. and bringing everybody together so that it just sounds so wonderful. Yeah. I can keep saying all of the, the nice words, but oh. yeah. So what's next for Sweeping Exits? The um, album's coming out and then... Yeah, the album's coming out. We have a tour, uh, sort of a smallish West Coast tour. We start on the 20th. Um, tomorrow we're playing a release show with Babe Waves from Bellingham, who's amazing. Cool. Um, and yeah, and then uh, we're going to try to tour on this album a lot and kind of do this incarnation for a while. While we're doing that, I'm going to be in my lair, you know, composing the second record, which is going to be more of a post-punk goth kind of thing. And then we'll sort of shift and become a post-punk band uh, when the time is right. <laughs> and so you have, you, you sent me a video that was, I think it was private when you sent it to me. Oh. Is that coming out? Oh, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have a music video for our song, The Palace, that's coming out. Um, and that's by Monty Wolf. And then we have another music video by Danny Ransom, who does all our album art. Uh, that's for Only Dream in Black and White. That'll be out in July. Uh, another video for Charming. Um, by a friend who I'm blanking on their name because it's that kind of day. <laughs> no, I, I understand. Um, but yeah, there's going to be four videos, so I'm really yeah. happy to roll those out as well. I also wanted to say that um, the track title, um, Barbecue and Bigotry. <laughs> bigotry and Barbecue, yeah. Sorry, I got it wrong. <laughs> yeah. I love that. That's just <laughs> fun you. to put together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, well, um, so you said the album is only available on CD and cassette. CD and cassette. Yeah. It's also on Spotify, Bandcamp. Cool. Awesome. Yeah, All right, totally. we'll get those links up on the online playlist. Yeah. So everybody can find it. Amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sleeping Exits live on Audio Oasis on KEXP. Did you guys pick the light colors? Yeah, purple. Mm -hmm. They go with Nia's hair. Oh, That's, yeah. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, she's our purple girl. Yeah, I like it. Discover new music at kexp.org. Damn, son, where'd you find this?